Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights at the 2017 Innovation Forum Leaders Conference. Today on the show we have Jean Bolger, Vice President, Venture Investments at JJDC. Welcome Jean. Thank you very much, it's great to be here. So JJDC is the strategic venture arm of Johnson & Johnson and from what I know it invests across all sectors and all stages of businesses. But of course, you must have some kind of a criteria as an investor. Can you tell me about, about those? Absolutely. So, you know, Johnson & Johnson is the largest healthcare corporation in the world. Um, we have three big sectors to our business. We have um, pharmaceuticals and biotechnology, medical devices and consumer healthcare. Uh, and as a venture fund, we invest across all three of these areas. But being a strategic investor, we, we focus our investments on things really that we're interested in. Essentially, the reason for our investment is not to make a financial return, but it's to get early line of sight to uh, new technologies that we think uh, we could help uh, to bring to market and in the market uh, by incorporating them ultimately in our pipeline. So it's very much a strategic thesis. So if you're trying to figure out, well, what sort of strategy we do have, what would we be interested in, you can look at our existing product portfolio. Obviously, we'll give you some great insights. And also on uh, our website, Johnson Johnson Innovation, uh, you'll be able to see quite a detailed level of the sort of things that we're interested in, in each subset, if you like, of our therapy areas, both for the pharmaceuticals business and the medical device business, and indeed, consumer healthcare. So for financial investors, whether it be VCs, angels, their form of success from the, their portfolios would be in the form of exits, whether it be IPOs or being acquired by pharma companies. What, what's your success as a strategic investor? Well, so we're measured uh, certainly on financial performance. So we do treat our portfolio as if it was a financially driven portfolio, but our primary goal is uh, strategic events within our portfolio. Uh, we call them onboarding, so it could be a license to J&J, &J, it could be an acquisition of a company, um, it could be a research collaboration at an early stage with one of our portfolio companies. That's our first goal, um, and when we can deliver on that, we're very happy. Now, you know, like with uh, financial investors, we can only accomplish that a minority of the time. But along the way, we think we get line of sight to very interesting technologies, to great teams of scientists and entrepreneurs, and we get to help them in their journey. So uh, that in itself is a reward, I would say. Are you able to talk about how big your fund is or what sort of ticket size you have, things like that? Well, so we're what you might call an evergreen fund. So we're not investing from a discrete fund, we're investing directly off the balance sheet of J&J, and J&J &J being a very large corporation, has a large balance sheet. Um, so we don't talk about the size of our fund, but it would, let's say from a benchmarking point of view, at any point in time, the book value of the portfolio of our investments would be large. It would uh, put us uh, well in the uh, top end of the market of large uh, institutional funds. And do you often provide follow-on funds to, to your portfolio companies? Absolutely. Uh, we're very uh, patient investors. We think it's a great mix for a company to have institutional investors that may be uh, motivated to pursue an exit at a certain point in time that's a function of the age of their fund. Uh, we're not measured in that way. Uh, so we absolutely commit to a current round and future rounds uh, on the basis of our strategic interest. And what better investor to understand that you need patient capital for a pharma company? Right. Exactly right, yeah. exactly yeah. Right. right. So let's talk about you. Um, you have an interesting background. So you were on the business development side on, for J&J Pharmaceutical and a lot of other companies previous to, to that as global head of licensing. And now you're working with much earlier stage companies as you know, vice president of venture investments. How has that affected your life at J&J? 
Well, so it's, when I look back at my career, I'm a little over 30 years in the industry now, so it's a rather a long time. Uh, and I'm a physician by training. Uh, I joined the industry pretty early in my career, much earlier than physicians would typically join the industry. And I, I joined immediately into uh, a marketing role. Uh, I always say that in the course of my career, I've been going backwards. <laughs> so I get uh, ever earlier and earlier in terms of the focus of, of my interests in the industry. And at this stage now, uh, as a venture investor, it really is at the earliest possible stage. We're trying to spin out technologies from universities. We're trying to get a company started from the ground up. Um, so yeah, it's very early stage investing. In terms of the transition from a business development function like scientific licensing, where I worked before, um, and venture investing, it's a fundamentally different concept from a business point of view because what you're doing is you're investing in the business and becoming a shareholder in the business. So the outcomes of that business really matter to you. It becomes your project, it becomes your baby, just as much as uh, for the founders. Um, very different dynamic, I would say, of interaction uh, with the outside world beyond J&J &J, uh, to the business development role where you're, uh, if you're like a transaction agent, man managing a transaction period. And then after you've completed the transaction, somebody else, typically in R&D, takes over that project and mines it for you. Here, uh, when I make an investment, when I close an investment, a transaction, that's just the beginning. So it's a very different dynamic. Mm. And we've seen more and more pharma companies licensing or picking up companies at an earlier stage and also more investors, financial investors, um, signing themselves up as patient capital for biotech pharma companies. From your point of view, I mean, J&J is a pioneer in the space with J Labs, J Links, J and J, JJDC, for example. Mm -hmm. From your point of view, is this likely to continue as we go along? What's your outlook on that? You know, I do think it's going to continue. Um, I think there's a broad recognition in the industry now that most of the innovation uh, that is going to happen, that's going to change and address unmet needs for patients is happening outside the walls of our organization. And the same is true if we're a big company, the same is true for every other company of our scale. Um, so yes, I think uh, the opportunity that we're exploiting here, all of us collectively, as investors uh, in life sciences is to foster that early stage innovation still in the hands of the entrepreneurs and the founders where it's best placed really. The last thing you want to do with early stage innovation is put it over the fence into a big, large uh, company where it could be subject, let's say, to a prioritization decision uh, within six to 12 months. Much better to nurture it, bring it along, bring our expertise to bear to try and leverage it and uh, improve its chances of success. And then when it's ready for prime time, what we really do well as an organization is late stage development. So that's really the business model in terms of early stage innovation. Uh, it's not unique um, and I think we'll see lots more of it. Thank you very much for your time, Jean. It was great talking to you today. Thanks. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.